Earlier, we were talking about um, private companies bottling water. Would it make any difference if, if the city of Portland, for instance, started bottling water for sale? Would it make any difference to me? Oh uh, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> or, or as a, as a public policy, would that be something we would want to oppose? Also, uh, uh, certainly, absolutely. Okay. In fact, um, there is a quote, and I'll read it quickly. Um, Basically, U.S. District Judge Malcolm Marsh, who has presided over Columbia River salmon disputes for years, warned at a recent Portland conference, this would have been two years ago, of fisheries leaders, um, the conference was of fisheries leaders, that other states might want to come after the Columbia as global warming shrinks their water supplies. Quote, I don't think those ideas have died. I think they're very, very much alive, just in sleep mode. He warned Northwesterners to settle our differences over fish and water, and this could be bottled water too, you know, mm -hmm. fill in the blank, whatever uh, the difference is. Uh, settle it now because you don't want people like Californians coming here in a situation of chaos. You want them to come up here in a situation of agreement. And apropos to that, um, until recently, Oregon was one of two states without a comprehensive water plan. So there was no guiding light as to how to, to divvy up water rights and who does get it and who doesn't get it like California okay. coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, uh, that's going to be rectified. There is a comprehensive water plan draft coming out this fall. Okay. And that perhaps will address that. Um, OK, so let's say, you know, let's make a few dollars here and there to balance the city budget or the state budget with our abundant water. Where does it stop? Mm -hmm. The difference between bottled water and wholesale water is bottled water is considered a product. Once the water goes into a bottle, it's under FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Okay. It's no longer EPA regulated. And so people tell me, lawyers tell me, so it's not possible that California could come up here and take our water wholesale because the law says can't do that, can't move it out of um, the watershed. You can change laws, number one. Number two is what's to prevent a big bladder being produced, mm -hmm. putting a whole bunch of water in there, trucking it or barging it down to California. Oh, okay. So. so that would, in spite of the fact that I th I, I'm not sure where it is, but Oregon has some prohibition about exporting water out of the state. Yes. And is that in the Constitution or is that is it a law? Or it's a law. It's a mm -hmm. law. So that's that not to be, be changed. Exactly. Uh, you know, the legislature is increasingly under the influence of big money. Exactly. Uh, and we have no way currently in the current law. Uh, in Oregon to, to limit that. That's right. Uh, so we could certainly see that kind of thing uh, yeah. change. Like the fella, um, the state legislator down in Southern Oregon who said, hey, it's a resource we have an abundance of. Why don't we change the law, which the legislature can do. Oh, okay. let's, uh, let's sell some of this excess water. Of course, he's in Southern Oregon, which is a little on the dry side. So he's a looking at the water up here. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. So. Yeah, so if it was in his backyard, maybe he would feel a little differently about mm -hmm. it, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, perhaps not, though. Right. 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 Yeah. So, uh, currently, so this whole idea about the bladder, <laughs> this is an <laughs> intriguing idea, and mm -hmm. I know that this has been proposed in California at one time, right. and they were going to take it within state from, I think, from Northern California and transport mm -hmm. it down to Southern Oregon, or right. uh, Southern California, right. and that never happened, I don't think. Not that I know of. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, and I was going to ask if you knew why it didn't happen. I assume it was probably well, I, I don't know. It could have been some environmental regulations. Yeah. It could have been that it just wasn't economically feasible to do it. Well, I, I honestly don't know. Um, they are pushing very hard to uh, go to desalinization and have something like eight desalinization plants on the uh, drawing board at $1 billion per plant. In California. In California. So. I don't know. I mean, bladders uh, transporting those very expensive, but uh -huh. certainly so it could it could stack up favorably. Um, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, that's very interesting. Okay, and does um, other than this one law, are there are there other regulations in Oregon that slow uh, privatization uh, of water? Land, look, for instance, land use laws. Are, are, could land use laws be used to either slow or prevent privatization? Um, I'm not that familiar with land use laws um, in the state of Oregon. Um, we run with uh, Western law, which means uh, um, that water rights run with the land. So if a private owner like Walmart owns a piece of property and has an artesian well on it, as long as it doesn't run on to somebody else's property, they own the ability to use that water the way they want to. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so yeah, that, that's uh, kind of ominous. Very <laughs> ominous. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, what uh, what are the what are the what are the main dangers of, of water privatization? Main dangers. Well, uh, just real quickly, uh, Food and Water Watch is an excellent source to go to for those uh, listening. It's uh, foodandwaterwatch.org, and if you click on their water section and under reports, you can find just an amazing number of things that describe uh, what the dangers of privatization are. Um, some of the things that they've documented well is, for sure, if your utility goes private, you can be assured assured of rate increases in um, water quality suffering that has been documented over and over again. Basically the reason the Alliance for Democracy and those of us who believe that uh, water is uh, a democratic right for all living things, not just humans, um, is uh, just that, that um, we need to preserve it and conserve it. Think about letting your uh, lawns go brown mm -hmm. in the summertime uh, for all living things. Mm -hmm. It is a closed system, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't seem like it. Okay, great, yeah. And the, other, the last thing I wanted to ask you about is there's, there's a new website about water in Oregon. Can you, yes. can you describe that for us? Um, yes, this one's actually connected to a national site, but uh, defend <laughs> Help me, David. <laughs> uh, defending Water for Life. Defending Water for Life slash Oregon. It's a new site that David put up and uh, we are contributing to in terms of articles. And it does include Hanford because uh, even though Hanford seems like a separate issue, it uh, is uh, jeopardizing the Columbia River. And the Columbia River is second largest in the United States and is certainly uh, the lifeblood of the Northwest. So. Great. Good. Thank you very much for joining Thank us Thank you, today. David. Great. It's good to have you here, and we'll have you back. That would be wonderful. Great. Good. Yeah, so in closing, of course, I want to thank our crew. Uh, before I do that, we, I, I do want to correct the, the website that we just said, the actual uh, address for the Defending Water for Life Oregon website is defendingwater.net backslash Oregon. So, uh, and okay. I don't have a link on that to our website yet, but I will have one in the oh. next few days. Okay. Um, uh, the the other the other uh, uh, website I want to call people's attention to is the move to amend, which is amending the constitution to eliminate corporate personhood. We have a new website here in, for the Portland group, and that website is move to amend pdx.org and I invite you to go there <coughs> learn a little bit more about what we're doing here in Portland and how you can be involved so with that we'll, we'll close I do want to thank our crew today uh, Janet Morris Virginia Hammond Roger Bates Tom Thomas Hollis Benedict and Joan Horton. They give up their time voluntarily to be down here at the studios at Portland Community Media uh, and record us. And uh, so we're on the air providing this information to you. And with that, I think that uh, we are finished for today. And I hope that you'll join us again next week. Thank you.